Dave Galex, Sam McQuay, Nick Totoro here from MD. We're going to talk to Stan a little bit two nights out from the show. So you were the, one of the first champions on the scene. So then you had a few years of downtime. What were you doing in that time? Oh, wow. So since my last win, which was a Sacramento Pro, I just decided to take some time off. Um, I had another boy. So I have three kids. Uh, started a new business, working on another business. But as far as bodybuilding, I kind of, you know, I didn't really have you know, um, any drive to really get back on the stage and do any bodybuilding. Um, so what I did was basically I spent literally the last year at least trying to get as small as I could. You know, I was working a lot of functional, uh, a lot of uh, calisthenics. So the bodybuilding thing was kind of like out of the picture for a while. So it wasn't until they decided to add the 212 to the Arnold Classic that inspired me to kind of get back in the, in the weights and uh, put some muscle back on. Lit the fire a little bit. There we go. So so now you're working with Dave Kalik. So when did you when did you team up with him? Oh, Dave and I have been working together. As a matter of fact, he's one of the guys that kind of helped me get off my ass and, and do my pro debut because once I had turned pro in 2006, I went through another mini retirement and I just kind of wasn't into bodybuilding. Um, so he kind of talked me into getting ready for my pro debut, which was a Jacksonville Pro in which I won. So um, we've been together since 2009. Yeah. So Dave, what is, uh, you just showed me some pictures on your phone. He's looking yeah, awesome. Um, What's he bringing to the stage? This contest, want to bring something special. Um, so I can say that uh, without a doubt, this is the grainy and fullest has been. His body's been maturing over the last couple of years. He's been training on and off, but you know, he had a great, a really great productive offseason in a very short period of time. His body is very fresh. Um, you know, like I said it before in some other interviews, you know, Stan's body needs a lot of calories. I mean his metabolism is it's it's rare. It's so it's so fast. So we had to do progressive calorie increases. Um, you know, again, Stan is someone who eats more pre-contest than in the off-season. It's you know, literally he's his calories go way up as the show gets closer. And that's he just has that kind of a body. So we just, you know, we took time, we had to build up volume, maintain the volume, and now we're, you know, separating it and getting it grainy. So that's that's kind of confusing for me because not every, everybody's always building up their metabolism yeah, to, exactly. to be able to take yeah, away. He's when we start. Keep in mind when we start, he doesn't have much of an appetite. So we have to be very progressive with the foods. Um, it actually takes six or seven or eight weeks even just to get him up to his structured calorie base, and even from there, like as he gets leaner, for example, we have to increase his proteins to accommodate his really fast metabolism. He's not, you know, so and he he carb cycles. There's a lot of fat in his diet, so he, he's unusual. He needs a lot of different types of foods. He them in different ways. Was there any kind of a caloric deficit or was it always eating up to oh, the no, show? No, like for the most part, okay. Basically, like there is caloric deficits. I mean, we carb cycle. So there's some days where his carbs are very, very low. Okay. So, but the overall calorie structure with fats, so his high carb days got progressively higher. Okay. His protein counts got progressive and so did his fats. So even though like he has a lower carb day, it's still his lower carb day last week was higher than a lower carb day, let's say, a couple weeks before that. You know. But the proteins is what's really been structuring up towards the show, towards the end of the show. He he eats like a two hundred and forty pound bodybuilder. Uh, yeah. And are you just coming in at weight? Are you gonna clear by a few pounds or it's, what? You know, I mean, honestly the scale, um, it's so unimportant the scale. You know what I mean? He's he's he'll be at um, the weight there's a lot of fluctuations in, in body weight, so he'll be Yeah, I'd like to note, you know, it's kind of like a uh, a thing that's been a, a nail on my back, let's say, of you know getting on the scale and, and, and fighting the, the urge to want to put some size on, you know, getting raver shows, trying to stay full all the time. Um, you know, but when I look back in my career, you know, throughout my career, I've, I've always been the smallest guy in, in the division because of my either my height, my body structure. Um, you know, when I turned pro at nationals, I was the smallest in the class, maybe second smallest, uh, like 182 as a light heavy. Um, we won pro shows, the smallest, one of the smaller guys. So, you know, this year I just decided, you know, we're not even going to get on the scale because it doesn't really, it doesn't make a difference. My whole goal was to keep volume, with, you know, in muscle by looking in the mirror. But my main goal is to bring my waistline down because, we, because you know, it's trial and error with, it, with becoming a pro. It's a fine line of being hard and rich plus full and big. And uh, we, I think we figured that out this, this time. Yeah, I was just telling John, uh, the secret weapon that a lot of people overlook is the waist. So it's like yep. you, you, can, you can have a 
very big wow factor just by a waist. And what he has is a structure that's, he's, it's all about his structure. I mean, he's got a tiny waist, he has, his long limbs, I mean, so, you know, he has an illusion. It's like, I, I always say, it's, it's not unlike Flex Wheeler or how Flex Wheeler competed at a very low body weight. When, when he got his pro card, he was literally just 214 pounds. He looked like a giant. So Stan has these tiny joints and these round bellies. It is an illusion. The weight's very, it doesn't mean anything really. Yeah, so I, I, just to make a note, I can guarantee, like, if, if I weighed in at a good 10, 15 pounds lighter than some of the guys in the front running, that a lot of that 10 pounds is going to be in their waist. So let's make note of that, you know? It's an interesting point. Yeah, yeah visceral girth in the waist. Yeah, that adds weight. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. um, so, I mean, you're two days out. I guess let's just talk about how you feel about the inaugural 212 division at the Arnold Classic. Well, I have to admit, you know, I've been in some pretty big shows, but this one tops them right here. Yeah, um, this is a, it's an honor, you know, I'm, I'm 40 years old now, this has been one of the best years of my life, both personally and, you know, training-wise, diet, so everything's falling together. I'm um, just glad that I'm here to be in Ohio at the Arnold Classic and on stage with the best 212ers in the world. Yeah, I'm sure Dave is just as excited as me. I'm really, I'm really amped to see the, the inaugural. Yeah, it's the first, it's the first 212. It is cool, you know. I mean, it's it's appropriate. They have it at the Olympia. It's perfect. The Arnold bookends one end of the year, and the Olympia at the end. It's perfect to have the two biggest 212 shows. Of course, it's, it makes sense. So it is exciting. So good luck to you, Stan. You look amazing in the photos, and I'm sure you have some uh, filling out to do or what or whatnot, some kind of a peaking protocol. So I look forward to seeing the whole competition on stage. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. All right, so this is editing part because I went blank a little bit. Uh, so that mic up. Too. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got to say something. I was just telling Dave. Mike. Oh, was that <laughs> Uh, no, you're just going to shut up. Are you burped? <laughs> no, I just thought it was too yeah, early. Yeah, it's my time here. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>